But these three processes right here, these three programs, the SH with the friends around them, are, are in fact copies of the viruses that are running there. Brain. The first PC virus began infecting 5.2-inch floppy disks in 1986. As SecureList reports, it was the work of two brothers, Basit and Amjad Farooq Alvi, who ran a computer store in Pakistan. The first mention of a possible computer virus dates back further to the 1960s by John Von Neumann, the theoretical father of computer virology. In his essay, Von Neumann describes how a computer program could be designed to reproduce itself. Von Neumann's design for a self-reproducing computer program is considered the world's first computer virus. Fast forward to 1971, Bob Thomas in BBN created Creeper as an experimental self-duplicating program that was intended not to inflict damage on but to illustrate a mobile application. It did not stop there and expanded further mostly infecting Windows-based systems while the lower percentage of Linux and Mac users enjoyed an advantage of stating that their system to be virus-proof. But then, over the years, Linux gained popularity among the common masses and hence the rise of Linux malwares. This is Deep, you're watching Arc Technologies, let us dive in. Before we go to the main part, it is important to understand how Linux manages file ownership Every file in the Linux system is under the ownership of a user or a group of users. Unlike in Windows where you can edit most of the files, Linux is strict about ownership of files, with root lying at the highest in the user hierarchy. You have come across places inside the Files app where you can't create folders, modify file contents, rename a folder, cut or paste any item. These are the places owned by root. Think of a very simple example. A different user has left a malicious file in your system and linked it to your desktop to replace an app you frequently use. You try to execute the file, it links to a different file in your system. Now that file cannot modify files under your ownership, it cannot also modify the files under the ownership of root. And root holds the ownership of thousands of important system files, which if modified or removed will break your system. The malware hence becomes practically useless. This is just one of the many features of Linux that enhances the security of Linux systems. Linux provides a superior user privilege mode. There is built-in kernel security defenses, Linux kernel lockdown, security through diversity. There are tons of Linux distros out there, implementing system security in different ways. Orbit, experts from a cybersecurity company, Intezer Labs, reported the discovery of Orbit malware for Linux, which is yet not detected by all antivirus systems. It steals confidential data and infects processes running in the system. According to Intezer Labs, Orbit modifies the LD preload environment variable which allows it to manage library loading and intercept function calls. The malware collects login and passwords as well as commands entered in the terminal and provides attackers with access via SSH. Until recently, Orbit was not marked by antivirus systems as dangerous software, but developers of protection systems have already begun to add it to their databases. Distinctive features of the virus are the storage of stolen confidential data in files and the machine itself, as well as almost hermetic connection to libraries and infected PC, which ensure Orbit stable operation. The ability to avoid detection and support the operation of the SSH backdoor. Intezer Lab has a detailed documentation about the working of Orbit on their website. A few months ago, Joachim Kennedy, a security researcher at Intezer and the BlackBerry Research and Intelligence team discovered a parasitic malware that affects Linux operating system and uses eBPF to hide malicious network traffic on an infected machine. Aptly named Symbiote, this malware needs to infect other running processes to cause any damage on the infected machine. Unlike other forms of malware that typically present themselves as executable files, Symbiote is a shared object library. Once it has infected the running processes, it provides the malicious actor with the rootkit functionality, the ability to harvest credentials and remote access capabilities to the machine. Next comes another Linux rootkit malware named syslogk. 
which is being used in attacks to hide malicious processes using specially crafted magic packets to awaken a backdoor laying dormant on the device. The malware is currently under heavy development and its authors appear to base their project on Adore NG, an old open source rootkit. Syslog K can force load its modules into the Linux kernel and hide the directories and network traffic and eventually load a backdoor called Recube. Linux rootkits are malwares installed as kernel modules in the operating system. Once installed, they intercept legitimate Linux commands to filter out information that they do not want to be displayed, such as the presence of files, folders or processes. Similarly, when first loaded as kernel module, syslog k will remove its entry from the list of installed modules to evade manual inspection. The only sign of its presence is an exposed interface in the PROC file system. CrowdStrike reported that the volume of malware targeting gadgets operating on Linux increased by 35% in 2021 compared to 2020. They follow the same pattern of infecting devices, amassing them into a botnet and then using them to perform DDoS attacks. Mirai, a Linux Trojan that uses Telnate and Secure Shell SSH brute forcing attacks to compromise devices is seen as the common ancestor to many Linux DDoS malware strains. Once its source code became public in 2016, multiple variants emerged. In addition, malware authors learned from it and implemented Mirai features into their own Trojan. CrowdStrike noticed that the number of Mirai malware variants compiled for Intel-powered Linux systems more than doubled in the first quarter of the year 2022, compared to quarter 1 of 2021. With the largest increase in variants targeting the 32-bit x86 processors. Mirai variants continuously evolve to exploit unpatched vulnerabilities to expand their attack surface, according to the report. But as a Linux user, should you be worried? Absolutely not. You see, getting a virus in a system depends on you in most of the cases. Don't visit or download softwares from sketchy websites. Make sure you get your distro ISO from the official websites only and not from any third-party hosts. Try using the terminal and the default repositories or the inbuilt package managers like apt, yum, ye, etc., whatever it is, or others like Flatpak or Snap to install packages, and you should be out of trouble. So, that's all for this video, and this video took a lot of hard work. So, please do comment, please do share, like the video for the algorithm, share the video if you like it with your friends and family, that will be a lot of help. And please, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and that will be a lot of encouragement for me and I will keep making such good content as always. And that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. That's it. I'll catch you in the next one.